G'day folks, my name is Graeme Stevenson and I'd like to invite you on a journey to meet and learn from artists all over the world. Sophia and I have travelled the globe, filming artists in their studios, but with our limited travel options these days, we bring you virtual colour in your life now. Learn techniques from some of the greatest artists in the world. Change things for the better by putting some colour in your life. Well, hi guys, and welcome back to Colour in Your Life. Well, we are in the Caldera Wildscapes Gallery, which is our studio in downtown Wollombar, northern New South Wales. But we are going to central Victoria today to meet a rural lady, a rural artist, that's a, it's a farm woman as well, but uh, she's an amazing, amazingly talented lady that does horses and landscapes and sculptures as well. Uh, but we're off to central Victoria. Kathy Ellum. It's fantastic to have you on the show and welcome. Thanks for having me. Not a problem at all. So you come from a, uh, a reasonably historic area. I mean, Ned, Ned Kelly was just beside where you are. Oh, I grew up in Beechworth, which is an old historic gold mining town, and then spent 20 years up in Queensland and we sold the farms up there and bought a farm down here in the Greeter Valley, which is just south of Wangaratta and right where Ned Kelly grew up. So, yeah. yeah. And the, and the property that you have now, you're standing inside your studio, but it's just such a fascinating, I mean, even the, the area around where you are, it's just so beautiful. You're a, you're a lucky person to have what you have, but, but your uh, studio is an old um, tobacco drying kiln as well. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, it, you couldn't, it's like a little storybook studio. You couldn't get anything cuter than this. But your history as a, as a woman was that you're a, a teacher, you've got a degree in um, plant science. Uh, from what I from what I know, I, I think with with obviously the way that farming is across the world, but particularly in Australia with droughts and flooding and everything that you guys have got to go through, that your painting was something that you you brought about because you wanted to inject uh, love and compassion and joy into people's lives. And you started about ten years ago. Uh, I think that you're most most well known for probably your draft horse paintings, which are absolutely magnificent. But tell me how that, that journey originally began. Well, initially I sort of uh, was getting a little bit bored, um, couldn't sort of do too much on, on the farm, so and wanted to pick up a brush. So I did a workshop with uh, a gentleman called uh, Bill Sass and did some outback paintings with him. And that style, like he took me under his wing and he taught me a style that got me off the ground. It's a little bit generic, but it's something that has enabled me to pay for the rest of the journey. And then I've just done a whole bunch of other workshops. So basically what I had to do in the early days with the biology, so I did teaching, um, failed at that, failed at um, doing all sorts of other financial analysis and those sorts of things. I had to get the logic out of my system and then go for what you know comes from the heart. And so I started to paint and I got serious yeah, about 10 years ago. Haven't um, put down the brush. I've been probably doing at least three days a week for the last 10 years. And I think that's what equals talent. Uh, it's just brush mileage. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and you're, you're an award-winning artist as well. I mean, you've won a number of major prizes in the process of doing what you're doing. But we've got a draft horse right behind you on, on a sketch, on a, on a linen canvas, I think it is, that you've already yep. started. So. Let's make a start on that because you, oh, this, yeah. You, yeah, your colours are superb. I mean, and your detail to light. I mean, your values are just amazing. They really are. And I think that you've got a lot to teach people in this particular show as well. So where do we start from there? Um, well, I like to start with my darks. So, um, and I'll just get into it, I guess. Sure. So I'll, I'll hone into the eye. I like to work wet on wet. And I like using transparent colours because I can get very rich darks without actually using black, um, you know, black paint. I, I, I think black is just a, you know, why would you use black when you can make it with all sorts of different interesting mixes? Yeah, being a rural woman, you, you go to a lot of these horse mustering events, I suppose you could say, and uh, you know, it's, it's not often that the person in the, in the street, in the city, or even in the street, sees a, a team of draft horses fully loaded up with all the regalia that goes with them, but you obviously go to a lot of functions that, that you see them. And you probably know a lot of the horses quite well. Uh, not the horses, but I've got to know a few of the people. I used to be quite shy. A lot of people would laugh at that, you know, yeah. hearing me say that I'm, I'm shy. But um, I'd, I'd go to the events and, and just sort of hang back and try and get a good shot from a distance. And as I have progressed through and just, I've got hooked, like 
I didn't plan on becoming a, um, an equine artist. It just sort of seemed to happen to me. And yeah, so I go to these events and, and just go and have a chat with the guys and, and you know, paint their horses. And, and we all love it. Like I love talking to them and, and hearing their stories and why they are involved. And then they, they love it because their horses are immortalized. So yeah. it's, kind of, it's a win-win. And I'd like to refer to some of the pieces. I'm gonna start with the, the draft horses and you've got one be called Before the Sun Goes Down which yep. is a spectacular piece and another one called Cross Stitch as well which is uh, yeah. which is beautiful too. I mean the detail in those is just just absolutely fascinating. The teams of horses and painting a great big team is, is interesting but I really love cropping in and getting that the different shapes that you get with the horses as they're all together I find that you know the abstractness of that sort of is, is very interesting to me. Okay, now what type of paints? We're obviously using oil paints, but what type of paints do you use? I like May Marie Puro because they're beautiful and buttery. Mm -hmm. I've been using them for quite a few years. I don't use medium with the paint and the butteriness of this is um, just perfect for what I like to do. So um, when you've sketched this out, what did you use to sketch? And that it, it's linen, isn't it, that you're working on? Yeah, 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 I use, um, I buy cre um, canvases from Create Art. Uh, they've just been fantastic quality over the years. Yes. And um, this is pre-primed linen um, on board. I've glued the linen onto the board. Uh, I usually buy the stretch canvases, but the, the linen, um, because it's primed, it's ready to go. I don't have to stress about, um, you know, getting it ready. So what are you actually looking for when you photograph these teams of horses? I know that you're looking for artwork and images that put joy into people's lives. Um, and they obviously do, I mean, they're, they're wonderful paintings, but I mean, what, what sort of camera do you use? What are you actually looking for when you're out there I taking the photos? Uh, I guess like the the driving force is to represent strength because I feel like strength is such a huge thing. You need strength in, in rural life to, to get through the droughts and all the other sort of stuff. And I sort of, I would like to honour the people that have put in so much effort to, you know, build the country the way it is. And the country was built on the back of these horses. Like they, they, were, the, they were the trucks, you know, the lorries. Mm. To me, it's a way of honouring my family. Yeah, I was going to say, even the titles that you use are very um, sort of humanistic titles. I'm not sure if the horses feel that way at the time, but like, like pictures like Did You Hear? And um, don't they call the little ones children? <laughs> like... yeah. Well, that one, that one I got down on a really low angle and they, um, they were looking down at me and I just sort of, as I was painting it, I just sort of thought, well, you know, they're kind of curious about why this human is down there doing that. Yeah, it just made me feel very small. You know, like I always feel small when I'm up against these horses at the best of times, but... <laughs> yeah, they're big animals, aren't they? They are huge. And, and it is just, I want to give that sense of that power and that strength and, and the size. They're just huge, big, gentle giants. They're just gorgeous. So when you were sketching this down, uh, do you use any sort of um, other photographic equipment like uh, a projector to put this up at all? or? I'm not a drawer. I'm, it was not a strong point for me. So I did workshops with Barry McCann and um, Lynn Diffenbach, and they just gave me, you know, some tools to get past my inability to draw. I use Coral Paint Shop Pro. It's a photo editing program, and I can put a grid on that and make the size of the photo the same as the canvas, and I can draw straight from my screen to the canvas. Oh, right. And I grid it and measure it um, with those um, proportional dividers, which have been some of the best tools. So you don't have to be a drawer or, you know, super good at drawing. And people don't believe me when they come in the gallery that I'm not strong at drawing. That's the calipers, the measuring calipers that Barry sells. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the calipers and then also just having that screen with the grid. I can see that you've got some quite fine brushes that you're using. What sort of brushes do you use? Yeah, I use um, Rosemary & Co and these are Kalinsky Sable Series 66. I don't prescribe brushes, you know, in my workshops. I don't sort of, I'm not adamant about what people use because obviously a lot of artists say, well, you need to use big brushes and I like tiny little ones. All right, well, I just wanted to bring up another one of your landscapes and it's called Bullocks on a Hot Summer Eve. 
the atmosphere that you create in those landscapes is just wonderful. Thank you. That one is actually one that I cropped together from several photos and that's something too that I teach in the online classes is how you can take reference material from different photos and images and then splice them and put you know edit photos and create your own sort of composition. Um, it's to me it's a lot quicker than sketching and I can sort of push things around and pull it and make it bigger and smaller and all sorts of things like that without um, having to re-sketch it in a little sketchbook. So I find that um, you know, you, the use of technology is really quite handy. Well, so on as part of your creative resume, you also do uh, a number of pieces, uh, metalwork pieces, with cars and old milk tins and old barrels, and you use a plasma cutter to basically um, get the designs that you want done. That's actually quite fascinating. Uh, tell us a bit more about that. Oh, it's really interesting. So the plasma cutter works with electricity in an air compressor and the electricity zaps the metal, the air compressor blows the metal back. So I've been doing these sort of florally designs ever since I was a kid. So all through university, my sketchbooks, my university books were filled with little flower designs. I started, I don't know how it sort of, how you sort of come from drawing little doodly flowers onto metal, but that's what I started to do. And it's all freehand. One flower leads to another leaf and, and a swirl or something like that. And it's just great fun. I go and do it when I just need to get away from being too critic, you know, analytical. It's sort of um, freeing. So, and I've done uh, lots of different things, but that car, the car. was definitely <laughs> the most interesting thing. I've done an old Austin. That really sort of belongs in a sculpture park of some sort, or I don't know where yeah. somebody wants to sort of hang it over their used car sales lot. <laughs> that, that might work well too. One of the most liberating things I learned from Lynn Diffenbach, value is most important. A lot of people get in their heads that, oh, this is a white blaze, so therefore I must paint white. And then they get white and they put other colours into it thinking, oh, well, I've got to grey it up because, you know, in the shadowy parts it's not straight white. I don't have very many rules that I stick to 100%. Everything's got flex, except I don't use titanium white on a canvas by itself. I think that light, so what you read as a white blaze in the shadows can be purple. Now, the reason why I stick purple in the shadows is because when I come to put the light on over here, I'm going to have something that reads value correct and then when the light sits on with my touch of yellow, I've got complementary colours working together. So I've got purple against yellow. Then I've also got the value levels correct as well. And that's what makes these paints. So that honestly is the secret. So you can go away and, and do your own thing now. This, that was it. That's the secret to how I paint. And you've actually, um, you've gone on to win a number of awards, uh, some of them quite recently as well. Uh, the one that's hearts as big as the sky, which was uh, obviously three cowgirls. You won a major prize for that, it was first first prize. The Crack Up Sisters just inspired me. Lovely women and so down to earth that I was absolutely blown away by their passion and I just wanted to capture that. So. Um, they they go out and do performance, you know, humorous, sort of creative, acrobatic, uh, whip cracking and all sorts of stuff, but they're just fantastic entertainers and I wanted to honour that, you know, to show people how amazing they really are. Yeah. But even so, you do have, you have painted, when you talk about portraits, the, there are a couple of pieces that you've done, uh, a gentle light for a start, which is a, obviously a country fellow. He looks like one of the guys off um, those Opal Hunters on TV. Yeah. <laughs> He's a pretty, pretty rugged looking kind of guy. I knew exactly what I wanted to do when I saw that photo. And it was the same with the, the painting it called Edges. I knew when I saw him riding down the, the street that that's like I knew I, this was going to be a painting before yep. it even... Yeah. So And it's kind of neat when that happens. I just wish it would be more frequent. <laughs> so when you're doing your, your teaching, um, are you teaching mostly the landscapes or the draft horses? What, what, do people Every, sort of say, look, we want, we want to learn this and then you make up a course for it? Uh, no, I just do everything. I guess I design them myself because I just sort of think, well, what would I want to know? And I try to go, all right, if I had to break this down into basics, here's what I'd do. Yeah, so all the, the classes, um, I have them on my website. I've been trialling different ideas. I think the one that suits more of the international setup is the Sunday morning ones that I do. 
And I try to get those ones to be like very detailed. There's a lot of information in there. And um, then I'll, I'll do a Friday night session, which is sort of my aim for those was to, to sort of just go, all right, here's me in my studio. I'm doing working on whatever current piece I'm doing. And you can just watch how I translate all that theory that we've learned in the, in the practical classes into actual like specific projects that I'm doing that might be heading to gallery or competition. So I figure, like, I reckon it's great because people get an inside view of me working at, uh, um, you know, in the studio, doing my thing, and you just happen to be, like, right here, you know, joining me in that process, which, I, you know, I can't do that in a physical workshop. So physical workshops are great because I can teach... Um, and I can actually look at what people are doing. But the online classes, I can give so much more information and they can have it in bite-sized two-hour pieces and spread over a month or so. So I do them in units and um, they can just get a, a bulk lot of lessons. And I teach effectively everything that I know. So, I've, you know, I feel that it's been a great opportunity because I don't get past some of the basic stuff when I'm actually in a, in a physical workshop. And, mm. and that's what I love about these online classes. You've also got the Kathy Ellum tonal palette that you use. It's one that you've come up with yourself. So tell me a little bit more about that. So for most of my transparent colours, I like to um, blend tonal steps so that or value steps sorry um, to get them to go from dark to light so when I decide that I need something that's maybe a roughly a number four like four or five on the the value scale of zero to ten so dark to light I can just dip into it and grab the the correct value that I'm looking for and and just play with the color so something that you can do at home as a as a test for yourself is to Step out the tones or the values, sorry, the strange tone. Um, step out the values to go lighter from a dark. So say you get a, um, a ultramarine blue and step it into different tonal steps and then grab some other colours and step them through with white, mixing titanium white into it and see if you can match the tones. So if you take a black and white photo of your palette, you, you can make sure that you've got the same tone or same value, sorry, of blue to red to yellow. Oh, yellows are a bit hard because they kind of step in at about five. You can't get a proper black with yellow. But it, it, I find it easier to have them all there set up so that I can just scoop up a little bit of each of the colours and then just put them on the canvas. And the trick is, is to just do a little bit of brushwork without mixing the colours 100% and that, that, that is that challenge for me is to, to not mix it 100% but get the correct value so that when you step away it all reads as correct but when you get close you can see all these beautiful pure pigment. So if people would like to come along and be part of your online courses and I would highly recommend it because you're a very talented and knowledgeable woman, what is the best website to do that with? Uh, KathyEllum.com kathyellum.com uh, yep. and then you can go in there and have a talk to Kathy and then um, sign up and uh, this is just a great way I mean we're using the technology and so are you the last 12 months has changed the world a great deal and this is part of that as well yeah it's, look some of the challenge you've got to sort of roll, either roll with it or you know bury yourself and I decided that um, I had the gear and just thought that this would be a good opportunity and I found that I love it. I've found, a, you know, I've got online community now with of students that come and join us and we're all getting to know each other because there's a Q&A before and after class. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we sit and have a chat and sometimes I'll cover things that I don't cover in the recording. So um, obviously coming to the class and being there is, is just that added bonus. And it, it's just, I get to share stuff that I can't do in workshops. Okay, so I've been working through uh, my darkest darks and coming up through to the lightest darks in the shadows. And it's a discipline that I think is, is well worth training yourself to do. Well, I find it very easy. It makes life a lot easier to simplify things by looking for the darker shapes and then sitting the lighter ones over the top. But I haven't entered into the lightest light yet and it takes effort and time to just pull yourself back because that's the exciting stuff which you've got to get this is the foundation work and if you don't get those foundations planted properly when you come to put the light on 
it looks wrong because it's sitting on nothing and you don't get that sense of dimension. So I always, I, I like to just get these shadows set up and discipline myself to just make sure that everything is covered in the shadows and then I sneak up on the light. So I'm going to be starting to work on where the light's hitting the surface now. Mm -hmm. And as you said beforehand, you want your work um, to emit a sense of joy and peace with people and, and, and let them understand, I mean, building a bridge of understanding to what, what it's like for people in the country. Yeah, so we went through, you know, we had a pretty tough couple of years when we were on Pembroke and nothing ever seemed to go right and always felt like we were um, battling something. And I got to this point, I won't get into the politics of it, but I just, everything was driving me crazy. And I thought, well, what do I do? Do I do these angry paintings and take them down to parliament? You know, do we take these starving animals that, you know, people have, just, just through social media, people had a choice to, you know, close things down. I decided that, no, I don't want to use my voice, my artistic voice in that way. I, I want to be positive. I want to shed a positive light on things so I focused on joy and I feel that because that focus has been in my core for so long like that is part of who I am and what I do my, my work now reflects that on a very subtle level so when people see my work they go oh gee that, that's you know so alive and vibrant and and happy and joyful so I'm obviously getting my work is you know imbued with that because I've got it in the back of my mind. So I just figure, well, if you focus on what you want to say, it will eventually come out in your work in the most surprising ways. Mm. All right, Kathy. well, we've had an absolutely fabulous day in your studio and we learned a great deal about you as an artist and also a woman living on a working country property in central Victoria. But uh, thank you so much for having us in your studio. I've been watching the show since I started painting and, you know, back, I don't know, since uh, the dinosaurs were work, walking the earth. And I just think it's a, it's kind of a dream come true to actually be on it and doing my own little episode and having my own piece of the, uh, the limelight. So thank you so much for doing this with me. Thank you so much, Cathy. It was absolutely a pleasure. Plus the fact that we did it virtually with Colour in Your Life, which is an amazing thing as well. So we really had a great day with you. Incredible. Cheers. Thanks, love. Alright Kathy, had a great day with you, it was absolutely spectacular, we weren't a lot and your website address if somebody wants to come and talk to you about your classes, what is that again? It's www.kathyellum.com Okay, and once again you can come into colonylife.com.au and have a talk to us about anything we've got there and also all of our YouTube and Facebook platforms going extremely well. But We've had a great day. Thank you so much. We will be seeing you again. But until next time, remember, make sure to put some colour on your life. See you, Kat. Bye now. Yeah.